everybody, this is Christine. In today's video, we are going to talk about design tools that I use every single day as a full-time UX designer. This is one of the most commonly asked questions that I get and reasonably so because there are so many different tools out there nowadays. You sort of get into this decision fatigue and especially if you're starting out, you might feel like you need to learn how to use everything, which is not true by the way. And so in today's video, I'm only going to be covering tools that are most essential, efficient, and also affordable because a lot of these tools are very expensive. You don't want to waste money on tools that you're not going to use that much. So I'll be covering tools that are industry standard that big companies like Facebook, Airbnb, Google are using. Just a caveat that if you are a freelancer or you want to become a designer at an ad agency, you might be using other tools. But the ones I'll be covering are industry standard for Silicon Valley and tech startups. Before I get into each tool, I want to say a special thank you to HP for partnering with me for this video. I intentionally chose to feature this HP Pavilion 15 laptop for this video to demonstrate that you can do everything that a UX designer does without investing in a super expensive laptop especially if your end goal is to be hired as a full-time designer at a company it's most likely that your company will give you the latest and greatest laptop that's over two thousand dollars this one gets the job done it's efficient it's powerful and i will do a full review on this laptop at the end of this video. So watch till the end if you want to see my personal review. So let's get into the tools. There's only really two tools that you need to learn how to use and those are Figma and Sketch. Surprise, surprise, you might have already heard about those tools. I used to use Sketch for the longest time until more recently our team transitioned over to Figma and this is happening all across the board um, at different companies. Instacart, we used Abstract and Sketch for the longest time and then we moved over to Figma for several reasons and I'm going to cover them. So Figma is the most important tool that I use every single day. Uh, I live and breathe in Figma basically. I create high fidelity mockups, prototypes, and also my presentation decks on Figma. So the good thing here is that once you learn one tool, it's so much easier to learn the other tools. So once you learn Figma and you end up at a company that's still using Sketch, it's going to be really easy for you to pick up on Sketch. So um, the learning curve is not that steep for these two tools. So the price. You cannot be Figma for its price because it's free and you have up to three projects which are basically three folders so within those folders you can create as many files as you want which is amazing because sketch is 99 dollars for a one-time fee and there's a catch you have to update the app every year which is an additional 79 dollars i didn't know about this until my friend told me and when i wanted to access my files in my personal laptop and i have an outdated version of sketch I realized I had to pay an additional $79 and I was like, nope, I don't need to access that design file. So I ended up moving everything over to Figma anyway because Sketch is such a hassle. File management, Figma wins this big time. So when our team used to use Sketch and Abstract, Abstract is another program that you have to use for Sketch if you want to properly manage your files. It's very cumbersome and it's nearly impossible for two designers to be working under the same file because basically you have to create a master file first and then each designer who wants to work on that project needs to create a separate branch because that's your working file and then you have to merge that branch file to the master file and you end up creating duplicates you don't know which is the latest version it was all sorts of chaos so once we moved to Figma life was good again <laughs> Collaboration, oh my goodness, I love this feature. It is so easy to do real-time collaboration on Figma. So anyone with your Figma file link, because you can paste or copy and paste the Figma URL and just send it to your product manager, engineer, or your mentor that you want feedback from. And anyone without a Figma account can access your file, but if they want to directly comment on it, they would need to get an account but it's free so it's super easy for them to get an account whereas on sketch 
you need to actually pay $99 for anyone to access your file. Two designers can be working on the same file. It's really cool when several people are on your Figma file because you can see where they're looking at and if they're commenting. I kind of like to stalk my engineers when they're viewing because I can see their viewport and see like Oh cool, they're looking at these designs. Maybe that's just me. Figma is browser-based, which means that you can access your file anytime you want if you have that Figma URL link. Some people don't like that it's browser-based um, because they used to not have the desktop app, but now they have the desktop app. So if you want to work offline, you can do so by working with the desktop app. But I personally like to use their web browser just because I don't like to shift between two softwares. I'm on the web browser anyway, checking my email. When it comes to clickable prototyping, Figma definitely beats Envision. So before I started prototyping on Figma, what I used to do was I would save my artboards on Sketch, export them to Envision, create hotspots for those screens so that people can click through the different buttons. And what got really cumbersome was whenever I was doing that for user testing and I made small design changes, I would have to export the artboards, change the hotspots, and just go back and forth, which took up a lot of time. Now with Figma, you can make changes on your artboards directly. You don't need to keep updating your designs every time you make changes because your design file is basically your prototype. But when it comes to advanced prototyping tools like Principle or Framer, Figma is definitely not there yet. Most tech companies can afford to have their designer work on small, minute interactions and cool animations, so it's most likely that you won't be using Principle or Framer anyway. There's also the inspect feature on Figma where developers can access the CSS codes, hex codes, and all these different attributes by going directly to your Figma file versus Sketch doesn't allow you to do that. You have to use Zeppelin or some other tool to upload your artboard so that the engineers can pull the codes needed to build your designs. So all in all, Figma is the best and hottest tool out there right now. Um, now I'm gonna walk you through how I use Figma. This is not gonna be an in-depth tutorial, but I just wanted to show you how I set things up and how I use Figma to create high fidelity mockups, prototypes, and presentation decks. So when you go to Figma and you sign up, this is what you're gonna see. And on your left, you have your projects. You can see that I have only created two projects and you can have up to three, but underneath each project, I can create as many files as I want, which means unlimited data, hallelujah. So I'm gonna go into UX design tools. This is the file I created for this video. And you can see my high fidelity mockups. And also I've created this slide just to show you how cool your presentation decks could look like if you use Figma. If you click on each element, you can see the attributes on your right and your layers panel is on your left. And then this is the tools panel. You can also prototype with these same screens. So you have the design panel here, but you can click the prototype. Now I've already created this prototype uh, just for time's sake. And I've connected the screens to do what I want them to do. So you can see the play button here. I'm going to play my prototype and show you um, what I've done. And this took me maybe 15 minutes. I'm gonna choose the role, agree to these terms. This is a project I've done at Instacart. I'm gonna click the cup foods and a button showed up. Now you can't do a lot of these animations on Sketch. Like for example, when I click on cup foods, the button pops up from the bottom. Look at that. Like you can't do those things on Envision. Maybe they've changed some of their stuff now, but back then, which was a year ago, I couldn't do those things. And if you want me to do a more in-depth tutorial on how I use Figma to illustrate things, how I set up my prototypes, feel free to let me know in the comments below. There are a lot of tutorials out there on Figma. Figma, the company has created a bunch of videos for you to learn. They're very short, five to 10 minute videos. So Figma is such an easy tool to learn if you don't know how to use it. And you can also see uh, my slides here. Um, so I'm gonna show you some of the slides that you can potentially create. Play this prototype. 
let's say I was presenting this to a stakeholder that I'm going to show them how it looks on web, desktop web, and then I'm going to show them how it looks on mobile web. Ta-da! And you can scroll, this is how it's going to look. I really like this feature on Figma because you can't do this with keynotes. I use Keynote a lot for presentation decks, especially when I'm interviewing. I still create slides on Keynote just because it's faster for me to do. But I think I'm gonna start using Figma more uh, because I'm getting used to the tool and you can just do so many cool stuff with Figma. I know that a lot of you will be asking me, do you need to know how to use Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign? Do you need to know all these Adobe Suite products? The answer is no. Uh, if you are applying to be a UX designer or a product designer, no company will reject you for not knowing how to use that vector tool on Illustrator because you won't be using Adobe Suite products in your day-to-day -day job. If anything, I use it for my own hobbies when I want to create stickers or I want to learn graphic design on the side, but I don't use it for my day job at all. Some of you have asked me about Adobe XD and I personally don't know any designer or company that uses Adobe XD. So maybe freelancers use Adobe XD, but it's not industry standard. Principle and Framer are advanced prototyping tools and the learning curves for these tools are very steep. They are very difficult to learn. The good thing is that you probably won't be using them in your day-to-day -day job. I've personally used Principle maybe once or twice a year when I'm interviewing and I to create slides and I want to add some magic in my presentation and add some cool animation. So other tools that I use that are not design related are Quip and Jira. So Quip is like Google Docs, um, but it's easier to collaborate with people. So my product managers would use Quip to write out their roadmaps. I would use Quip to document my designs. Jira is mainly used by product managers and engineers to break down their projects and tasks because you can create multiple tasks and just manage all the things that have to be done together in a in a more structured way. I rarely go in there unless I have to file a UI bug. So those are all the tools that I use and now I'm going to review this HP 15 laptop. As a designer, it's really important to have a laptop that is powerful so that you can simultaneously run design softwares that take up a lot of power. This laptop has a 1.3 gigahertz 10th generation Intel Core i7 processor with up to 3.9 gigahertz with Turbo Boost technology with a 16 gigabyte RAM. Now, having a powerful processor is really important because this will help your laptop withstand all the programs you'll be running as a designer while saving your battery when you are doing a basic task like responding to emails. So the battery on this laptop lasts up to 10 hours and charges really fast. The battery can go from zero to 50% in approximately 45 minutes. To give you a better comparison, the MacBook Pro 13 inch has a 1.4 gigahertz, eighth generation Intel Core i5 processor with a turbo boost up to 3.9 gigahertz. And Apple retails a base model MacBook Pro for $1299, while this HP sells for $899. So in other words, for $400 less, you get the 10th generation Intel i7 processor twice the amount of memory and twice the amount of storage with two inches of extra screen. This laptop also has a memory card slot which is crucial if you regularly import photos or videos to your laptop as I do. The MacBook Pro unfortunately doesn't have a memory card slot so you'd have to purchase a converter separately. So this is a 15.6 inch full HD display with a bright view panel and iris plus graphics that makes everything super clear and bright. The audio is also pretty nice due to the dual speakers and audio boost that fine tunes sounds. So if you are considering getting an affordable laptop without costing you a leg, uh, definitely consider this and I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any other suggestions for future videos, please write in the comments below and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And I will see you next time. Bye!